there is much speculation and mystery surrounding the subject of the moon and its origins. There are currently three mainstream theories attempting to explain the origin of the moon. The fission theory suggests the moon was once part of the Earth and somehow separated from our planet in its early history. The condensation theory suggests the moon and Earth condensed together from the original nebula that formed the solar system. The capture theory states the moon was formed not in the vicinity of the Earth, but in a different part of the solar system, and was later captured by the Earth. The impact theory states an object in space the size of Mars crashed into Earth ejecting large volumes of matter into Earth's orbit, which condensed to form the moon. Although there are facts that disprove every theory we are told by mainstream science, they are still put out there. According to mainstream scientists, the Earth and the Moon are the same age, but according to the facts, this is not true. Some moon rocks are as old as 5 billion 300 million years old, and others are as old as 20 billion years. The Earth itself is said to be 4 billion 600 million years old. Elements such as Uranium-2, 36 and Neptunium-2, 37 were discovered in lunar rocks, and are not found naturally on Earth, this fact, and the age of lunar rocks disprove the fission, impact, and condensation theory. Scientists also discovered that the moon contains heavier elements on the surface, the crust is composed primarily of a laminate, a mineral containing large amounts of titanium, uranium-2, 36 and neptunium-2, 37. The heavier elements of a naturally forming objects in space would have ended up in the center and the surface would contain the lighter elements, this means the moon is not a naturally forming object, this fact also disproves the condensation and capture theory. On November 20, 1969, the Apollo 12 crew crashed a lunar module onto the moon, this created a moon quake which caused the moon reverberated like a bell for over an hour, leading to the conclusion the moon has a light, or no core. According to Thomas J. Glover, our moon has a diameter of 2,160 miles and a gravity of 0.17, that of Earth. NASA's more accurate moon gravity figure is 1.6, with a current orbital speed is 19,051 miles per hour. The Moon's density is 3.3 times an equal volume of water, while Earth's average density is 5.5 times that of an equal volume of water. The fact that the Moon is only 60% as dense as Earth has led scientists to two theories, that the Moon is without an iron core, and possibly, is partially hollow. Data and computations point to the conclusion that our Moon is internally hollow to a great extent. Since most scientists claim that there is no natural explanation for such a peculiar phenomena, the inevitable conclusion indicated that the moon is artificially hollow. Our Soviet theorists agree. Isaac Asimov, a Russian professor of biochemistry and writer of popular science books, said by all cosmic laws, the moon should not be orbiting Earth. He went on saying, we cannot help but come to the conclusion that the moon by rights ought not to be there. The fact that it is, is one of those strokes of luck almost too good to accept. Small planets, such as Earth, with weak gravitational fields, might well lack satellites. In general, then, when a planet does have satellites, those satellites are much smaller than the planet itself. Therefore, even if the Earth has a satellite, there would be every reason to suspect that at best it would be a tiny world, perhaps 30 miles in diameter. But that is not so. Earth not only has a satellite, but it is a giant satellite, 2,160 miles in diameter. It's too big to have been captured by the Earth. The chances of such a capture having been affected, and the Moon they having taken up nearly circular orbit around our Earth are too small to make such an eventually credible. According to our scientists, the Moon is bigger than it should be, apparently older than it should be and much lighter in mass than it should be. It occupies an unlikely orbit and is so extraordinary, that all existing explanations for its presence are fraught with difficulties and none of them could be considered remotely watertight. These are just some scientific findings, which disprove all the theories suggested by mainstream science. There are some historical facts, which indicate the Moon's presence in our sky is younger than the human species itself. Our ancestors on both sides of the globe tell of a time, 
when there was no moon orbiting our land. Ancient, which include Greek philosophers, describes a time, when there was no moon near Earth. Democritus and Anaxagoras taught that there was a time, when the Earth was without the moon. Aristotle wrote that Arcadia in Greece, before being inhabited by the Helms, had a population of Pelasgians, and that these Aborigines occupied the land already, before there was a moon in the sky above the Earth. Since Serenus, a Roman grammarian and miscellaneous writer from the 3rd century AD, also refers to the time in the past, when there was no moon in the sky. The memory of a world without a moon lives in oral tradition among the native tribes in South America. The natives of the Bogota Highlands, in the eastern Cordilleras of Colombia, relate some of their tribal reminiscences to the time, before there was a moon. In the earliest times, when the moon was not yet in the heavens, as described the tribesmen of Chibchas. People on both sides of the globe have oral and written records of a time, when there was no moon in the sky. Another theory of the moon's origins does not share the popularity of that of the mainstream theories. Theorists suggest the moon is a hollowed-out planetoid, partially artificial, belonging to and still in use by the Anunnaki. One thing to note about the moon is the chemical composition of moon dust is different than rocks, which means it is not a result of weathering. This means it must have originated elsewhere. Another thing to note about moon rocks is that despite having no magnetic field, moon rocks were magnetized, which shocked scientists. If you believe the Earth does not have a solid, or molten interior, and is hollow, one thing you may wonder is where does the Earth's magnetic field come from? If you understand the reptilian agenda you may understand my theory on the purpose of the moon and the magnetic field surrounding Earth. I theorize the moon is not only a base, or home to another species, but also a machine belonging to the bloodline elite, which generates the magnetic field around our environment. As organic machinery, our bodies are containers for our souls, or consciousness. As soon as a conscious being, human or not, dies on Earth, he or she is trapped in this prison planet, with the magnetic field as a net, keeping us from escaping the matrix controlled by the reptilian elite. We are forced to reincarnate here, to be used as a cheap energy source, and be their eternal slaves.